One, two, three. Guess who it be? It's your boy C L I. Damn, I tried to make. Oh, F F I E. There you go. See? Mm, that's how the fuck we holding it. Rhymes, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> What's the deal? What's the deal? Uh, welcome to Driving the Right Lane. I am your host, Clifford Sykes, a.k.a. The Uptown Supervillain, a.k.a. your cousin Cliff talking shit, and I'm tapping in. Yo, what it do? It's your boy Chris Jones, a.k.a. Lord Kronos, a.k.a. Old Head Swag, Ajimams, a.k.a. Bass in your face, and I am tapping in. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. So uh, just prepping y'all today is going to be a heavy one. Um, So we just going to warn you ahead (laughs) of time. It might get a little emotional up in this piece, but... Don't be emotional. We're going to try and hold it down for y'all. So yeah. um, Two crying ass niggas. That's right, dog. Uh, blubber. Blubbery niggas. Blub- blubbery too. What? Blubbery, blubbery niggas. niggas. Yeah, you know what so, I'm saying? Um, yeah, so Cliff, man, tell them what's going down, bro. Like It's a, it's, it's going to be a whole episode long mental health chicken. So get ready. Let, yeah. let the folks know what's up, man. Yeah, it's been a minute since we've, we've had like a typical show with like the mental health and the other stuff. So like Bass just said, the focus is really just on mental health and communicating and being as transparent as you can, you know, not holding on to shit, holding on to things. We ain't doing all that, man. We as black men, <clears throat> have a fi- we have to find a better way to communicate our emotions. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's really what it is. No doubt. No doubt. Um, the one thing about life, uh, <laughs> Chad Ochocinco said some shit <clears throat> on a Monday night football game in a warm-up, and it was one of the realest things I ever heard. It's not funny, but it's, it's the fucking truth. Right. It was like three things in life are guaranteed. What's this? He said you were going, no, four. Okay. You were going to live. Right. You were going to die. No doubt. You are going to pay your taxes. And number five, number 80, 85 will always be open. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I was like, that's some funny shit. Yeah. But one of those things uh, kind of knocked on the door and it got very, very close and personal. And that's, you know, just to, just with life. You're going to experience death. You're going to experience loss. You're going to experience, you're just going to experience some negative shit. Yeah, yeah. And it's about how you handle it. It's about, it's about the process. It's about having faith. It's about having a support system. It's about communicating all these things. Um, my aunt of sixty plus years passed away from cancer on Wednesday night, going into Thursday morning. Uh, <clears throat> try to say this as nice as I can, but. Fuck cancer, first yes. and foremost. Fuck, fuck that cancer. shit. Yes. Um, it's terrible. She had chose, she had elected to not, she had did chemo. She had cancer like three or four fucking times. She beat the shit every fucking time. Right. Uh, but this time she chose not to deal with the chemo. She elected to go with the radiation. Okay. My father had dropped my sister off, my sister, his sister, my aunt, off at the hospital Wednesday afternoon. Right. Saw her, spoke with her. I'm going to pick you up tomorrow. Right. Comes out of radiation, her body goes into some type of shock or state where her organs just fail. Yeah. Sorry for sorry for your loss, bro. <coughs> like, Doctors fuck. just call him. Yeah. And then he had to disseminate the information and, and everything to everybody else. Yeah, let's let it out, bro. That's rough, man. Losing people is hard. And uh for for you know, Cliff lost his aunt on the same day that was my pop's birthday. And my pop's been gone for eight years now. And he would have been 70 years old this year, which is why, you know, it, it was a rough week for myself having to deal with that. You know, I've been dealing with it for a, a few years now. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to talk about, man. You know, Pops was a, was a, was a good dude. He was. Um, <coughs> you know, he was my hero, yo. Like, I aspired to be like that, man, for real. So, uh, you know, it hit me really hard. It still does to this day. Um, and then hearing about your aunt, dude, it's like, you gotta you gotta appreciate you know the people in your life that are influential to you, <clears throat> and and you know savor that and really appreciate that stuff while they're around, because you never know, man. Like about that's the whole thing about life, dog. You like never know, bro. It, nothing is guaranteed, man. So it's it's you know if you if you have people in your life and you love them, let them know every day. Tell them that shit. Yeah, dude, <clears throat> for real. Cause like you say, you never know when that when you won't get a chance again. Cause I you know just uh. Having that thought in my head, I remembered it just like you said. Your your 
pops dropped your aunt off at the hospital. I remember seeing my dad on a Tuesday. He helped me out and dropped my or picked up my daughter from school and dropped her off at her choir performance on a Tuesday. And then four days later, my mom gave me the call that he was, you know, gone. And that was the last time I saw him. So it's crazy out here, man. But that's the thing, too, is is <coughs> letting everybody know that it's healthy to talk about it. Like, if you keep it bottled up, it's just going to eat at you inside. Yep. It's really going to mess you up, man. So uh, as, especially as brothers, too, where a lot of us are conditioned to, you know, hold it in and, and put on that air of being strong and silent and not talking about shit. Like, don't do that. That ain't you know? it. Nah, <coughs> dude. Like, let people know. Because if they don't know what's going on and, like, they just see you acting however you act when, you you know, dealing with grief, you know, that's just, it's wild, man. Like, it, it's hard to, it's hard for people to see you suffer if they don't know something's going on with you. So. There's a correlation with life with, to that point where you don't know what people are going through. So it's easier. I'm not saying be a pushover. I'm not saying being a chump. But just try to be good to people. Just be good to people because you don't know what the fuck somebody's yeah, going through. Yeah, you don't through. know what their struggle is, man. Yep. So you don't know what the relationship with if they had a loss when somebody's cheating. Just some stupid shit. Yeah, dog. You don't fucking know. So that's you know, just try to operate that way, yo. <clears throat> and, and and be good to everybody. And and you know. Just think about it first. If somebody's wilding out, maybe they're having a bad day. <laughs> right. Or maybe it's just crack. You don't know. <laughs> if it's crack, <laughs> slap the nigga. Yeah, right. <laughs> just slap him. They'll be so, all right. They'll come uh, through. But anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, you know, we was rapping last night, just kind of chopping it up, talking about things in life and Instead whatnot. Crack, just slap yeah, just my slap word, my yeah, name. You know, sometimes you got to let people know. Don't do that. But uh, we <sighs> was chopping it up last night talking about, you know, like trying to remember the first time you experienced loss, right? <laughs> and I was telling Cliff a story. Like, I remember when my grandfather, my father's father passed. I was four years old. And I remember, like, going to the funeral. And I asked my dad if he was going to come back like Dracula because we used to watch like all kinds of crazy, scary movies and shit. Right. Bella Goosey on, like, shit. Yeah, PHL 17 <laughs> back in the day. Oh, yeah. You know, so watching Frankenstein and Wolfman and all that kind of stuff when I was a kid. But I asked, you know, if my grandfather and he was like, no, nah, it's not going to happen. But I have a memory of my dad sitting on the couch in the living room in the house I grew up in. Like it was like late afternoon, sun coming in the window. So he's kind of silhouetted up there and he's sitting on the couch just kind of like staring out in the window. Like, just not really saying a whole lot, but just, like, like thinking about something. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, I was just like, okay, you know, it's just my dad sitting there. But as an adult, like, understanding what that <laughs> image means and, like, he just lost his father. And, like, all the things that he was probably thinking about, all the memories that he had of that person. Damn. You know what I'm saying? In that moment, he was just like, oh, shit. And just, like, thinking about life, man, because you do that when you get older. As a kid, like, you have no idea what loss really means. Like, you understand if your parents talk to you about that shit at A. Because <laughs> yeah. a lot of people don't talk to their kids about that, which is, you know, for a certain age, it's cool. But, like, when they get a little older, you kind of got to prepare them, man. I was going to say, why do you think that is? Because I, I don't have any kids. I know yeah. you do. Well, I think it's just because, like, you don't want them, you don't want to, like, have them experience, like, for real life, man. You're trying to keep them innocent and shit. And, like, you don't want them to, to have to deal with the things that adults deal with. So you really don't talk about it that way. You know, you let them know that, like, certain people are gone. But you don't really, like, want to sit there and put all that heavy burden on a child just because. Is it burden? Because from a child's perspective, there's no, there's no, point, of, there's no point of reference. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say, man. I think right. mostly it's, it's, excuse me, it's <clears throat> to, to save your feelings as a, as a parent. Like, right. Because it's hard to talk about. Like, right. this shit is not easy. So, like, if you just, like, sit there and you kind of let them know, but you don't really go into it, I think it's more for yourself than it is for the kids. And then, like, when they get to be a certain age and they start understanding more things, it's kind of like when you start laying the heavy, you know, burdens of this person is gone forever, you're never going to see him again kind of thing. Yeah. And, like, you start to understand that as you get older and have more life experience, which is crazy because, like, I, like we were saying before, dog, like, I remember, you know, that thing about my dad, and then, like, I know I had I had gone to a couple other funerals after that, but I never understood what that shit meant. You know what I mean? Yeah. As a <clears> child. <throat> yeah. And then not until, like, when I was in my teenage years, and I remember being on a class trip, like a music trip with the choir or whatever I was in, and I remember, like, I called my parents because we were, like, I think up in Boston or something. And, like, they was like, oh, everything's cool. Everything's cool. Boston. Fuck. Yeah. And then I got back home, and they were like, oh, yeah, uh, your papa passed away. And, like, they didn't want to tell me because I was up there doing some shit, you know, having a good time. They yeah. didn't want to put that on me yeah. while I was doing that. And then I got burden. home, mm -hmm. 
And I was like, well, how come you didn't tell me? And I was like kind of upset by that a little bit. But like thinking about it now and as an adult, I'm like, you know, that was kind of cool of them to not put that on me during the time where I was supposed to be enjoying myself. Yeah, be with your support system, yeah. be with your family. But then, then you know, we'll then we come it. home and they lay, and then I could be around people to, to kind of deal with it the way I had to deal with it, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's it's just wild thinking about, like, how at a young age, like, you know kind of what it's about as you get older and you have more life experience yourself, you understand what's going down. Right. And then being an adult, like, you just think about that shit all the time because, you know, you're old like me. Both the fuck old. Yeah, we ain't that old, man. I gotta stop saying that shit. Man, look, we old, bro. We don't get some young motherfuckers. We experience, baby. It's like wine. It's like a fine wine. I'm old. The way I fucking feel with what's going the fuck on and seeing shit, I'm old, bro. Yeah, well, I mean, like that. Well, and that's another thing. Like all the shit that you go through in your life, and like the things that you experience, like especially on your job, bro. Like the shit that you (laughs) see on a daily basis. Yeah. Like I don't know how people deal with that, man. And then like to not talk about that shit to people is wild to me. Like just people just hold that in. Well, it's that's all. That's that's the company I work for. I get it. That's you know it's it's to your point with that, man. It's a lot. It is, and it's it's heavy, bro. Like Mm. you got it. You got to get that shit off your chest, cause you know like seeing some certain types of things, man. It really weighs on your mind, and like. How, you know, dealing with that, being able to process it, A. So, you know, as somebody who's gone through and, and, and done therapy before and talked to somebody about shit that was bothering me, like, I remember f- the way I felt before I started doing that, like, holding it in, just kind of ruminating on the thoughts, not really saying it, putting it out there, like, it just stews, dog. It's like, a, it's like you know, if you put, like, a beef stew in a pot and you let that shit cook, it just cooked down, yep. gets concentrated, yep. you know, Cooks it gets thicker. Out. Just, just sit there. You know, you could burn it. It'll get all fucked up, you know. But when you start, like, putting it out in the universe and making it, like, real to other people and, like, you hear the words instead of just thinking about it, it's like letting it go almost. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're putting <coughs> it out there and it just kind of, like, it's not in, inside your head anymore. You're just kind of, like, letting it loose. And, I mean, like, you're still dealing with it. But, but I feel like it's not as strong. Yeah, it just feels like it's it's more helpful because you're letting it go a little bit. Dissipates the yeah. actual feeling of it. Yeah, so, and that's the thing, too, like, talking about my pops passing like i don't really talk about that shit to people you know it's 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 tough for me but it's one of those things where i'm like i don't feel like putting that on somebody else which is bullshit because that's what people around you are for to talk shit out that's how me and you think exactly i'm not i'm not laying my burden on somebody i don't want your own shit yeah you're worried about the fuck i got going on but the thing is man like that's what people are like your support system talking about that that's what they're there for like people are there to help you out like it'll be it might be hard to deal with for them, but like that's why you talk that shit out, man. Like you need people there to 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 lay that shit on you, because you can't deal with it by yourself. Like you're not supposed to. That's not the design. Nah, hell no. Nah. <laughs> like we as we design. as human beings are a very social social people. Yep. Should be anyway. Some of us niggas is cut off sometimes. But, <laughs> but you know how it go, man. Like it's it's just like some people don't like talking about that shit, and if they don't, then you find somebody else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So, but it's 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 definitely better to let it loose and talk about it than it is just to sit there and keep it inside of you. So that's my advice, y'all. Listen to me. I'm smart. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> Listen to me. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, my first loss, you know, I lost them. Well, it's not average, not typical shit, but I lost like cousins to like uh, drug overdoses. I lost a cousin to fucking AIDS. Like, did you really? Yeah. God damn. My cousin Mark, fucking AIDS. A whole other conversation. Right. I was like 10. Didn't, this is like this is like in the early 80s, sorry, late 80s, early 90s, the whole AIDS and crack up era. Right. All right. So had it, didn't really resonate, didn't talk too much about it. But my right. first loss was my mother's mom, my grandma. Right. 97. Okay. Yeah, 97, sophomore year of high school. You know, I know she had cancer, but just seeing it still didn't, still didn't like register that like she's checking out. Right. Because I would have to, like, pick her up and walk her up steps because she just couldn't walk. She had um, uh, liquid f- would fill in her lungs. Oh, she was like pneumonia and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So she wasn't able to do a lot of things. Damn. So having to do that every day as a kid, didn't really it didn't really register until she had passed. And I remember seeing my father. That was the first time I'd ever seen my father, like, around me break. Right. Break. Like, that, that- like at the funeral, he's fine. But like seeing her, my father just broke. Yeah, dog. That's his mom's man. Like no, it's it's his mother in law's. Oh, his mother in law. My mom wasn't. Oh shit! For real. Yeah, my mom had already. They'd already made. 
this is it's, I'm a trauma tired of saying they had already made the peace with it. They had already they had already accepted the transition. Right. Like, hey, we're going to talk about it. We have business together. That's another thing too with family and other stuff that it's a dark side of this part. But you got to talk about the affairs. You got to oh, yeah. talk about that stuff because for us as a culture, when you know what's going on, it's better to talk things out and have things prioritized. Yeah, because man. the worst shit in the world is when everything happens, you're asking motherfuckers for money. Or you're doing a fucking fish fry. You're doing this to raise right, money. Right. No, man. Find out life support. Find out the uh, find out life insurance. Find out who's what she signed on. What's here. What's there. Get that shit in order because the nasty part about death is, you see like the it airs out family laundry. Hell yeah. It's for the negative. Nothing good comes out of that shit. So if it's sometimes, not set though, up, sometimes it does. Anytime money's involved, anytime yeah, there's well. property and stuff involved, that shit gets ugly. If it's not written down right. where it's very, very cut and dry, facts. it's all subjective. And family will show you who the fuck they are. That's very true, man. I, I saw that with my grandma. My grandma had a triplex. <laughs> I'm not even going to get into personal stuff. I was about to get personal. Yeah. She had a lot of business going on, and she had had business. She had set things up for my mom and her sisters that was it. But the other family members felt as though they were entitled. And it just got fucking ugly. Right. Um, that was my first loss. Okay. Uh, impactful loss, you know, with B's mom and then other family members, stuff like that. Uh, I always shout out my homegirl, Ayana. Um, she, Ayana was, Ayana was a chick I dated <laughs> very early on. Okay. <clears throat> Wife material, probably would have married her. But just I knew where I was at that point in my life where I'm no good for you. You weren't ready for it. Yeah, she was like, I love you. You're my husband. You, Yeah, dog, you Damn. need to get your shit together. I'm just like, I'm out here crushing the box. Right. Like, I can't do that to you. Like, you're a good one. And we always kept in contact, always kept in contact. And before you know it, she got married. Okay. <laughs> Fucked me up. Because I'm like, wait, you married? Huh? And... Got married, you know, life happens, and then we reconnected, and uh, she wound up getting fucking cancer. She Damn, had cancer man. twice, beat it the first time. The second time, it got bad. I reached out and called her and talked to her for about an hour. Yeah. And then literally, shout out to fucking Al, my man Al Weems. She was a bigwig at University of Penn. Like, she she ran some shit at Penn. Where? <clears throat> yeah. Um, I knew she was sick. But Al had said something. I had saw something on Facebook or something. I didn't even know she had passed. Word. Until I clicked, and it was like, wait, what? I call her home, and I call her parents, and they're like, yeah, she passed two days ago. And it fucked me up because I thought that I was in the loop. And that one really hurt because she was a special person to me. Right. She's a very, very special woman to where it's like, maybe, you know, we'll figure this out. She's older. I'm older. We've lived some life. We have experiences. I know you. You know me. Let's just see what's going on. Right. Didn't happen. See, and and you know, like it again. As I said earlier, <coughs> like that you never know when that's just going to hit, man. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and you know, you had that that experience with her earlier on in your life, and like it didn't work out the way you guys thought it might. And then you know, but but at least you kind of like let each other know the deal back then. You know what I'm saying? Like to the point, not not fully, but like you guys kind of had an understanding, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. There was an understanding. It's just like I get <clears throat> I get a little flustered and overwhelmed with like death because that's it. Yeah. And then I start to think about the the not the greater or like the the bigger picture. Like with my aunt, there were a lot of decisions that were made that impacted that got to this point. Right. That could have been not not saying it could have it could have alleviated or cured it, but put it in a better Better space, better quality of life, better care, better things that you had the opportunity to do, but you didn't do it. But that's who she was. She was a fucking firecracker. Right. And she was one of the first people for me to look and say, yo, I'm going to do shit my way. I'm not an easy person to get along with. I'm not an easy person to deal with. I'm going to do shit my own way. I don't give a fuck what you think. I don't give a fuck if you don't like it. Right. If you know me, then you know I'm going to move the way I move. And that's basically, she's a big, big contributing factor to that because I saw her move a certain way Word. and it was always free and like yo I can you can do that hell yeah oh shit and she's a woman like oh shit you can really come out here and just live your fucking life and just do you because remember we're we're so that's when, when we talk about we're old we're from that era where there was no Google 
there was no fucking like information. There was no information base. Yeah. There was no cell phone. Like you, you just learned by what was around you, you basically. You, I, you grew up a little different than me. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's my pretty, parents do as I what is it do as do I as say, I say and not, not as, as, I as I do. Yeah, and if you question them, that was an ass whipping. That was some punishment. Listen, that was some form of corporal punishment. I'm gonna tell you what, if bro. If you questioned, if y'all know my mom's man, she's the <laughs> sweetest woman in the face of the <laughs> earth. I love her to death. Oh, she, you know, <laughs> most people would not realize, but like mom. Whoop my ass when I was a kid, bro, for doing shit. Like, what the fuck did you do for her to bust your ass? I don't know, dog. That's what I'm saying. No, you being, lying. You know nah, what the fuck man, you I was did. Nah, man, I was being a disrespectful ass, like, teenage kid, bro. What, like, was, you, what, the, what was you doing? Just not listening to what she tell you to do. Like, do as I say, not as I do. No, yeah. dog. She bust your ass. Bust my ass, bro. But for, but for what? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, All right, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story. Story time. I'm going to put moms on blast a little bit. I love you, mom. This I'm not. I'm not trying to say, but oh, shit. she was telling me to practice my cello all day, right? Because I play cello. What is this? Mo better blues. Yeah, it's dog. Mo better blues. She's like, <laughs> look, get in there and practice your cello. And I was like, I'm not doing that. I don't feel like it. You didn't say it like it that. It was just bro. willfully disrespecting. You didn't what say she, it like that. I was like, no, I'm not. I don't feel like it. And I was just telling her like, and I kept putting it off and putting it off. And then she got with me, and she was like, you're gonna get in here and you're gonna practice today. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck your little ass. And up. I was like, no, I'm not. And I literally like stepped to her like, no, I'm not gonna do it. And then literally, bro, I was in my living room. You've been to my house when yeah. I grew up. Here. I was in the living room. Yeah. She whooped my ass from the living room. Good. To the stairs. Good. Up the Fuck. fucking stairs, <laughs> into my bedroom, closed the door, and was like, you're going to practice that now. fucking cello. Whooped my ass the whole way up the steps yeah, for not LJ. practicing cello. So was, she's supposed to but do I'm it. saying it was, it was not, that wasn't why she whooped my ass. <laughs> she whooped my ass because I was being disrespectful. But I'm not listening to Your me. mom was so nice. I'm like, yo, that's it? That's Done. it. Yo, I'm saying Done. like. She's the she's the most lovely woman in the world, dude. Just don't cross her. Like, listen to her. And if you disrespect her, she's gonna let you know. And mom got hands, bro. Oh, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen. Well, not the hands, Linda but Jones I've seen got her. hands, bro. Yeah, and good. that's the thing. Like, I, there was another time. Funny story, you know, an aside, bro. I was like working on this thing. I was making a banner for a friend of mine's mm-hmm. band like, mm-hmm. back in the day. So it was like an old school before it was printed. Like I was cutting out like all this like sticky vinyl, mm-hmm. and it was like real delicate. And I was, like, doing this thing, spent, like, you know, four or five hours, like, cutting stuff out, getting it ready to go. And then mm-hmm. I'm, like, having my mom. I was, like, Mom, can you come help me put this on here? And, like, it's my project. So I'm, like, yeah, this is my stuff. I'm doing it my way. And Uh-oh. she was, like, why don't you do it like this? And I'm, like, nah, Mom, just do it the way I'm telling you. And, like, she was, like, no, if you do it like this. And I'm, like, Linda, listen, do it my Yeah, I did that. You hold first was name? Like, no, I didn't really say that. Okay, I'm, like, I was, like, Mom, just do it my way. And she was, like, well, if you're going to be like that, then you can do it yourself. And she dropped it, and the stuff got all stuck together. And I was like, Mom, you fucked it up. Like, straight on, probably like You 14. actually got fucked up I, out, out? I said, fucked. I said, Mom, you fucked it up. And Don't she back looked in. at me. Listen. Okay. I'm like, wait, what? Nah. So I'm like kneeling on the ground. Mom's standing over top of me. Mm. And she was like, it's okay if you're just joking around, but you never say stuff like that to me seriously. And I looked at her like with whatever look in my face of like some 14-year-old <laughs> badass who thinks he knows every fucking thing. And when I tell you, I got three shots to the face, bro. Like yeah, Sugar Ray Leonard status. style, yeah, bro. Holes. And I like... The do, fastest do, do, do. three, it was like, bah, bah, bah. and I was like, you saw, Whoa, you saw the bright lights and the flashes. And I, shit. I saw like shadows move, and then I, I felt things hit my face, and I was like, What the fuck? And then happening? I saw her standing there like this, and I was like, Oh, yo, yeah, nigga, I ain't sweet. The and I was like, All right, I got up and like walked upstairs and like punched a hole in my bedroom door. <laughs> you had to I was the like, what the but fuck I was that? just like, Yo, it was I, when I tell you it was the fastest three punches I've ever felt in my entire life <laughs> coming from moms, bro. Yeah, how tore old were my you? ass up. Like 14, maybe? 15? Oh, yeah, mom, LJ was young. Yeah, Yo, she got me uh-huh. She got me good, bro. Holy but I'm just saying, like, don't don't disrespect your mother. Never. Never. You only get one of them. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I learned my lesson, man. And like like I said, man, she's the sweetest woman ever. I love my mom's. Like, you know, just just don't piss her off, bro, because she will, she'll have your ass up. I've seen her raise her yeah. voice. Fuck me up that one time. I was yeah. like, whoa. I'm yeah, and gonna... that's the thing. Like, people don't expect that from, like, you know, people. They see her, and she's <laughs> like, just, you know, this real sweet lady. She's nice to mm-hmm. everybody. Just you know, don't don't get on her bad side because she will tear your ass up. That meme with Homer going back in the bushes. Yeah, when she pulled that <laughs> shit in the crib, my black ass was, was like, like mm, "I'm all right. I'm, I heard out. That. I'm going to check <laughs> yeah, out. Copy crazy. that. You got it. I don't no problem." So, but yeah, like you know, kind of kind of correlating that. I remember you know uh, when her mom passed, my my mm-hmm. mama, like we was all at the house. You know, I guess you know everybody. My aunt was over. I think both of my aunts were over. Uh, just like chilling in the house and and like you know we were talking about you know we hadn't heard from my mom in a couple of days and she was like living in like a, a senior facility okay. just like you know 
chilling over there. We had moved her out of the apartment in there like a couple years before. This was before I moved back, excuse me, from California. And um, like, you know, so we was like wondering and like she had gone out, uh, they, you know, they called it gallivanting. Like she would go out with her ladies and like go on trips Call and like hit, yeah, and drink. <laughs> hit, hit yard sales and do all that because my mom was a big yard sale person. No bingo? Not. Any bingo she, well, she used to, but okay. after she started going to church later, she stopped going to bingo. Okay. She used to do bingo back in the day, but she used to go to like yard sales and go shopping and like she was supposed to have dinner with a couple friends of hers. And I remember like we was talking like, oh, well, we haven't heard from mom in a couple of days. Let's give her a call. And like we called her up and she didn't answer her phone. And then we had somebody in, in the john like go down and check on her. And they found her in her bed. She had passed, you know, in the night, like, asleep. But they said it wasn't, you know, it was sudden. Like, we didn't understand or realize, like, you know, there was nothing. She wasn't sick. There was no lead up. It just kind of happened. Just trying to punch the ticket. But it was just, like, sh- the way that my mom lived, it was just, like, you know, she went out, had a good time with her friends, mm-hmm. came home, was content, just went to bed and just never, you know, like, she, she was, you know, right with the Lord and all that. And it was just kind of the thing where she was just kind of like, all right, you know, I'm ready to go. And and she understands. I think she realized that, you know, this is just me speculating, but I think she understood that, like, everybody was cool and, oh, and, and it was tired. okay for her. And, I, you know, it's time for me to rest. Yeah. And just, like, being there with all my family, like, finding that out was crazy just to see, like, the reaction of my different aunts and uncles when it happened because my mom took it a different way than, like, my aunt, one aunt did and the other aunt did. Because yep. she's, like, the second oldest my mom is. And, you know, it's just... Different relationships. Yeah, but it's just crazy to see how people deal with the same loss in different ways. You know what I'm saying? So, and 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 what their support system is like, and how they can deal with it. Because some people like if they don't have a whole lot of folks around, they don't talk about it, and yeah. they might go through it a little tougher than somebody who does. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, that type of stuff is crazy. And then like the story about my dad is like I told you I dropped you know you want to talk it was like it was Tuesday you want to talk about that what you want to talk about that yeah dog I got to uh-huh. man. you know uh-huh. like uh-huh. I, I don't usually this is like yeah so I'm like, I'm like oh I know I'm just gonna do that I'm like you sure you want to talk yeah, about yeah yeah bro okay. it's, I mean I got to bro so I saw him that Tuesday um you know like I said he dropped my daughter off for her choir rehearsal and I went and picked her up and I saw him and like thanked him and was like you know he was kind of like he had a cold and like didn't uh-huh. seem like anything was wrong it was a Tuesday and he yeah. was like all right well I'll talk to you this weekend or whatever <laughs> And then, like, went away, and that was the last time I saw him, you know, alive. And then I remember waking up on, you know, I was going to bed on, or went to bed Friday night, got a call Saturday morning, like, probably around, like, 7.30. And usually, like, moms doesn't really call that early, yeah. you know. And then, like, answered the phone, and she was like, yeah, come over. And I was like, what's going on? Like, I could just tell something in her voice. And she was like, yeah, can, I just need you to come over. And I was like, "Is <laughs> what's what's going on?" I was like, "Is it dad? Is something going on with dad?" And she was like, "Just just get in the car and come over." And like, she wouldn't tell me exactly what was going on. Cause she was holding it together on the phone. Well, she yeah. So she was just like, "Get over here." And I was like, "Okay, cool." And I remember like getting out of bed, like I was freaking out the whole time, and uh, you know, like trying to and 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 understanding, like kind of in my head, like I knew what was going down, but like talking to my wife and I was like yelling at her basically I was like get the fuck up we gotta go now and she was like I'm working on it I'm like no you got like mad cause I was dealing with my own shit at the time mm-hmm. and like taking it out on her like it wasn't her fault that we you know she was like literally like what the hell's up and I'm like mom just called we gotta go and like I was like ready to hop in the car and go like right away but we, I put clothes on <laughs> you know what I'm You're supposed like, to. Can't go out, so. can't, can't go out like that so mm-hmm. and I remember like driving the whole way from where I was living at at the time to Kennett you know, to the house, and, and just the entire time, like, I know what's up in my head, but I don't believe it, you know what I'm saying? And then I remember, like, pulling in to the driveway, or no, I pulled in because, like, my parents have a driveway, their car was in it, I pulled in on the street. And the right side of the curb. And yeah. I remember getting in and, and, like, walking in the house and, like, walking upstairs, and there were EMTs and shit in the house, and he was on the floor. And, you know, he was already gone by the time I got there. So, but like to this day, yo, like it it hurts to to drive to that house. So, like I, it just it just puts me right back in that moment every single time, dog. It's crazy. So, you know, like having to go over there and like because mom's in the process of like trying to rent it out and do stuff, and we're trying to like help clean it out and do that stuff. But like, literally every time I'm in the car, dog, it takes me right back to that moment every single time. And it's you know like that's not good, bro. <laughs> like. I got to talk to somebody and deal with that shit, man. It's hard. And, and like, do you feel like a kid? Do 
you feel like a child when you pull up, like helpless. Is it a helpless feeling? Like it's just I like knowing, shit? like knowing what happened. Right. Like, and that's the thing too. Is just like, as an adult, like that shit makes me think about my own mortality too. You right. know what I'm saying? Because right. he was 62 when he passed away. That's not old, bro. Young. That's real young. Yeah. So like, and knowing like my family history and knowing like my medical shit and like what I'm dealing with mostly, you know, my weight and all that, and like trying to do better that way. Because I know, like, the men in my family don't last that long. So, you know, like, my, my grandfather, I don't think he was that old. Or, you know, my dad's dad when he passed. So it's just, like, trying to get myself together. But, like, that kind of stuff just makes me, you know, replay shit in my head and think about, you know, putting myself in situations like that, which ain't healthy, you know. So, but, like, that's the thing. I don't talk about it a lot because it hurts to do it, but I need to get it out. So that shit, you know. Because the with life and death is as long as you live, you're going to deal with death. Yeah, man. Especially the older you get. Yeah, I was about to say, the older you get, you're going to have there's that there's a connection with people with that. It's an unfortunate one. It's a fucking dastardly. It's a dastardly uh, connection, but it's fucking death. Yeah, yeah. And 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 the thing about trying to deal with it in a healthy way instead of because like I mean there are days, bro, where I just want to get up and fucking kill a fifth of alcohol. And not do shit. Yeah. Not talk to nobody. Not be around people. Not even my family, dude, which is fucked up. Right. You know, because your family's your support system. The people that you love, they're there to help you through shit like this. And, like, you know, that kind of thing. It just, like, like, and it's still, you know, eight years later, I can still feel the exact same way I did on the day that I went over there. So, like, shit, just, just thinking about anything. You know what I mean? Just, like, Random shit makes me think about my dad, and then boom, I'm like right back in that moment again. That place, and you know, it's rough. And and to to be fair, it has gotten a little easier as time goes on. But there are certain days, man, where it's I just it it, it hits me like a ton of bricks, bro. And it's just out of nowhere because I've been holding that shit in for too long and haven't talked to anybody about it, which is not a good thing. So take my advice, y'all. If you have something that's bugging you. Get it out. Talk to people. Go see a therapist, man. Like, for real, because that shit does help. It legit helps. And if you're feeling some type of way, talking to people and getting it off your chest and not keeping it bottled up inside is the best way to kind of help you start to deal with it. There's going to be other steps you're going to have to take after that. But the initial step by actually getting it out and talking about it is, is one of the biggest hurdles that a lot of people have to deal with and face. They, and don't do because just like, you know, exercising or anything else, it's that first step. It's just starting. It's the hardest part. Like getting your ass out the door <coughs> to do what you got to do is always tough. But go do it. Don't hold back, you know, because like we said before, like time is fleeting. And you never know, bro. Like you never know. Nothing is guaranteed. So get out there and take care of your shit right now if you have the means. Yeah, that's, that's and there are resources bro. out there if you don't have the means to help you too you just got to do a little research and find out and reach out to Wonderful. people having a therapist is definitely fucking crucial in this day and age of life I don't even know what the fuck I was doing before I had one I, I played I played around with a therapist not in that way but I you know yeah. I, I jockey back and forth but then having a little situation happen at the job to where it's like oh, you need to go talk to somebody and I knew it once you get in there and you start talking they connect so many fucking dots. It's fucking crazy where it's like, wait, what? What do you mean when I was eight? Okay, wait, 21. Yeah. It's 13 years. Oh, shit. Well, I'm 40 now. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. So having a therapist is, is integral. Um, yeah, bro. It's just starting. It's yeah. like you just said. It's literally just starting. And Once you start, get the fuck up. Don't matter what you got going on. You might not feel like talking, but 40 minutes, 50 minutes later, you got a lot of weight off you. You have a lot of shit off you that you're just like, wait, this feels good because I'm talking to somebody. Right. And the thing about it, too, is it might take a couple (laughs) sessions. And, and, you know, it's not necessarily going to be the first John. Not Tetris. Yeah. Nah. For that perfect fit. Nah, dog. And you might have to go see a couple different people to find somebody who's like the right fit for you. Which oh, a lot I, of people, you know, it's just like doctors oh. and shit. I hate going to the doctor, too, bro. So, like, trying to find. Yeah. I love going to the doctor. For real? And, uh, I am honest as fuck. When you were a kid, hold, hold on, why? What, no. I felt Taylor look at me like, what? 
Nah. Yeah, going to the doctor's the shit. No. Because because that's the one. You're just going to say I'm fucked up. I'm not married or anything. Right. That is the one person you can be completely honest with. And they, there is no judgment. And he will save your life. I don't know about If you that. want some bullshit, you don't tell him you got a pain. You don't tell him you got some shit. You're tired. Mm. You fucking yourself up. That's true. You tell your doctor to fuck. T- hey, hey. Crit- hey, base was telling you, go talk to somebody. If you have a primary, tell that person yeah, what the deal is. Not just mental health, but Fuck physical that. health, too, yo. Yeah. That's important as well. You bugging. And that's the thing. You know brothers don't <laughs> like to go to the fucking doctors, This man. is true. I got insurance now. Real yeah, good-ass yeah. insurance. Well, that's the thing. I have like insurance, too, and I still hate fucking going to the doctors. You got to go, man. I, well, I have been, because I like talking about my family history and mm-hmm. shit. Like, I'm trying to, to prevent myself from dying young, because there's shit I want to do, things I want to experience. And, you know, in my life. And and if I don't get myself healthy, then how am I going to be able to do all that shit? Both mentally and physically, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing. It's important because a lot of people, because they think it's like in your head or it's like something to talk about and it's an emotional feeling or whatever, like they don't feel like it's as important as if it was like you broke your arm or your leg or something. It is important. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's, that shit goes hand in hand because if you're not mentally healthy, then you can't be physically the healthy. The physical health is going to fucking break down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like one of those things where people have to make that correlation and they have to understand that that, that shit is it's connected, bro, just like everything else in the universe. Oh, you, you you put some extra funk on correlation. I did say correlation. It was like Yo, correlation. I got my Dr. Like Phil on for a second, like, man. This nigga's... Yeah, nah, but I'm saying, man, I'm trying to sound smart over here. Nigga, fuck you are smart, now. not even. I was, I wasn't knocking my. You put some stank on correlation. Yeah, well, you know, it's just making sure people know that that's just connected. You know what I'm saying we can spell that word too. Yeah, just, well, yeah, I'm not gonna try. It's too early today. That's fucked up. <laughs> that, that's a pretty easy word to say. Go ahead, Cliff. What correlation? Yeah, C O R R E L L A T I O N. There you go. Eat one. Ha! Oh no, I added this extra letter somewhere in there. No, you didn't. It's two R's, right? Yeah, it's two C-O-R-R. R's, I think one L. I was about to say it's the L. Yeah, I'm still close. Yeah, hater. Hater. Yeah, yeah. glizzy for you. Uh, <laughs> With ketchup on you. it. We, are we going to go to Scripps, Scripps uh, Spelling Bee this year? You know what I'm saying? No. Wait, Why spell don't they again? Have C-O-R-R-E-L-A-T-I-O-N. Okay. I added an extra L last time. Take the L out. Yeah, take the L. Totally sidebar. Yo, you know what's crazy? It says Take spelling bee. <laughs> <laughs> Tay on the business right there. Bad bro. words with Jason Bateman. I that movie was fucking hilarious, bro. <laughs> I watched it like two days ago. I said, what the fuck was I doing with my time? Bad words with Jason Bateman. That shit was dope. Dude, that little boy. Little Indian boy. <laughs> he's like, look, Shwarma, I don't want to fucking talk. You get it? Okay. Yo, don't cut this. Go through that. Shwarma. Yo, the part where he saw that one, the one black chick with the huge titties. With the huge ass titties? Yo, yo, definitely. Yo, her titties were big as shit. They were ginormous, bro. But his, like, look on his face, he was just like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Those boy. chocolate areolas. Oh, my God. That shit was so funny, dude. And what's your word? Everybody has a word. He said, if you don't stop fucking talking to me, I'm going to make an anonymous report that you have a ticking bomb. You have a ticking bag. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. Go see Bad Words if you want to laugh at some crude shit Yo, with an adult fucking with kids. It was hilarious. Funniest shit man. in the world. That, yeah, Jason Bateman's the shit, too, so. He's an underrated He's an underrated actor. No doubt. Ozark's the shit. Anything he's been in is pretty, pretty good. Horrible Bosses. Um, yeah, dog. What else? Was, yeah. uh, what else was he in? Arrested Development. Oh, Arrested Development. Arrested Development, yeah. no doubt. Good show. Fucking, fucking Bad Words. Bad Words. <laughs> he took the, yo, remember he took the chick's panties and he's sitting in this, the, 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 the chick that's funding him? He banged her inside the what's my call? So he left her panties, took the panties, and then the little girl, he's talking to her at the spelling bee, and he's like, It's okay, it's your first time. Do this, do that. It's all right. <laughs> talking about her her cycle, and the little boy gave the panties to the little boy, like, these are your moms. It's okay. <laughs> Me and your dad. Or what do you say? I'm gonna be your dad. Something like that. A little boy stands up, he's smoking a cigarette with his mom. <laughs> he sees that shit. Yo, you gotta watch Bad Words. Oh my I fucking God, love man. that movie. I need to catch that one again because so I don't HBO remember. Max. Is it? Yeah, I'm gonna watch I that shit. Definitely again, was man. watching that shit. That's what's up. Um, yo, that's crazy. This, yo, all right, this wasn't that bad. This wasn't that bad. I was worried. I was, I was more worried. Oh, hold on. Totally sidebar. We're talking about talking to people and stuff like that. Uh, I don't. I'm not gonna do all that because that's like some weird shit to me. I don't know how to do all that. What you but mean? Just someone I saw in my pop yesterday. Oh. Like I was worried about him because I'd said he dropped her off and never talked to her. Right. So my I was always like, yo, that's his sister. Right. You know, I come from a typical black family where there's a lot of bullshit. It's a lot of bullshit, but you know, they had a very, very tight connection. Mm-hmm. And he was just being super duper ironclad. I'm good, I'm good. And yeah. I'm just like, Are you? And you know, I know he's not. My mom texted me randomly yesterday, like, he's not good, he's crying. Yeah. I pull up, 
Walk in. What's up? Where is he? Oh, he's outside. My pop's a creature of habit. So normally with the house, when you walk in, if he's outside, the door is locked. There's stuff going on. And in this case, in this situation, the door's locked. He always has something unlocked so you don't see it. Right. The door's locked. Literally, when I come in, what's up with you, bro? Um, come in. I go look underneath the fucking deck. My dad is sitting outside making bullets. Like for real, for real deal bullets. Not not the not the casing, the actual Just bullet the actual, that goes like the inside. Joint, yeah. The nigga is sitting on a bucket with like a Carhartt onesie, a fucking uh, these big ass gloves, the the, the, the fucking no glasses, the super duper Oakley Johns. Yeah, okay. Gloves, literally breaking lead, putting it over top of like this fucking Bunsen like burner crucible. Yeah, just that's burning that shit, and he had the fitting where like you pour it in yeah, for the different bullets. Clamp it down. No, that's that's, oh, to that's put putting it inside it in, yeah, the, the case. Casing, he right. literally was just melting them, putting them in, taking them out, dropping them. I looked, and I'm like, "What in the fucking mass shooter are you doing? <laughs> yeah. If well, a random person ran by and saw you doing this, they're going to call the cops." Preface: What you, What your dad do though? Like, he's my dad. Yeah, my dad's a hunter and a fisher, like big go. time. Yeah, he's an outdoorsman. Yeah, so he makes his own bullets instead of buying them. Yeah, well, so. he buys them, but I guess bullets are just more expensive now. Yeah. I don't know. Well, but that was also bullets on layaway. <laughs> Chris Rock. That's <laughs> inside. You didn't see Chris Rock bigger and black, and you don't get that shit. Hell yeah! But the way he was handling it yesterday, he made fucking bullets, and I just sat down next to him, and he laughed at the joke. When I was like, "What in the fucking mass shooter?" and he just like kind of smirked, like "You're you smart ass." Yeah. And we just talked. I'm like, "Yo, you good?" He said, I'm fine like eight times. That's how you know you ain't fine. And I'm man. like, you ain't fine, man. Yeah. That's a, see, and that's the You're thing, bro. <clears throat> you gotta, you gotta. And as a person who is like in your pop support system, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like you understand what he's going through. Yeah. And you see signs that you know he's not, right? And being there for him is a good way to help him deal with what he's dealing with and the loss of a family member. And that shit, you know, is 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 just as important as going to talk to somebody is being there for somebody. Yeah. If you can, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you see that somebody is not acting like their normal self or they're kind of out of, you know, the normal sphere of where they usually be at. Or, That's the scary part. He does that type of shit. Yeah, but, but like, you understand that something happens. Yeah, to trigger that behavior. But then you see, like, okay, well, you're clearly dealing with this just by not dealing with it. By just not about your business. business. And that is my ultimate concern with Tuesday, because everything's happening on Tuesday. Right. That it's <clears throat> uh, family members, My fam- fam- the men in my family have, like, this an abundance mindset in the sense of I'm going to, Attack everything that I, everything I approach, I'm going to attack it and attack it hard. And that's what we do. Right. However, by doing that, you don't stop to smell the flowers. Life requires balance. Yeah. Right? So you can attack everything, but if you don't take time and slow down and just notice and acknowledge what the fuck is going on, you're going to overlook and you're going to miss things. Yeah. And that is what is going on with my grandfather and my father. Right. My grandfather's older. Motherfucker still gets up and goes and gambles, does all the shit he wants to do, but now this isn't being critical of anything, but just I noticed that the balance from him is not there. Okay. And then from my father, it's the same thing. The balance is, isn't there. Yeah. And that is a conversation that I had had prior where you do realize that there's going to be a transition. And I, <laughs> there's a transition coming. Yeah. You don't see it because you're you're not – you're not attacking this in a balanced fashion. You're like I do. I'm very, very over the top. I get. I'm very over the top. I'm 100 percent or nothing. I'm very extreme. Yeah. And to see that now, to where now it's like, oh, I want to stop and start to do this stuff, and it's like this ain't you. Yeah. Something's going on, and my concern is Tuesday. My mom is like, whatever is going on, wherever he's at, you need to be by his side. Yeah. You got to be there for your pops, man. And, and you know, like, it's going to be hard just because, you know, stuff like going down on Tuesday, like, you know, it's a funeral, right, that you have to go to on Tuesday. Funerals are not easy, not especially especially the people that you're close to. Right. But, you know, trying to be there to give whatever support you can. It doesn't have to be, like, 100% full-time. Like, you, like, just being in the same room is sometimes enough. Just being able to be like, hey, Pop, how you doing? Yeah. 
Yeah. Just give, walking up and giving a nigga a hug. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I work on that champ. Yeah, well, I'm well. I, I work on that one. Baby. Well, that's the thing, bro. Like stuff like this has a has a has a funny way of making that easier to do. You know what I'm saying? But that's to the point of we were talking about where you talk to somebody and you take the proper steps to where that becomes a normal practice. Right. And it's not a normal practice. That's that's why that's why I'm able to I'm able to assess it and say, okay, I see what's going on now. I know that you're short here. Right. Let me unless I'm gonna be available so that way when this when this starts, when that when that when the process starts, I'm there because you're it's not going to be good. No. Nah. So I got to pick it up. I have to be there. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's recognizing that in yourself and kind of mentally preparing yourself for that moment, too, is one of those things that's, that's kind of difficult. But, you know, it's going to help you get through by being able to, like, understand how you're feeling about the situation and trying to help your father deal with the situation as well of right. losing his sister. And that's, you know, that's, that's kind of the crazy thing about loss in general is just like it's never the same ever you know what i mean and and you know one person will pass and you deal with it one way yeah. somebody else will pass that could be just as close as you were with somebody else yeah. but like you just don't deal with it in the same fashion and like figuring out different ways for you to cope with it is is you know one of the reasons why talking to people and going out and, and having a support system and being able to to, to not have your feelings bottled up is a good way for you to process what you're feeling, A, and then figure out how to deal with it yeah. in the second part of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's another crazy thing is, you know, we were talking about your aunt and my dad. I also had a friend who I was good friends with when I was living out west. Uh, you know, I was in a band at the time. He was a homie of our lead singer. They grew up together. But me and him was like boys, mm -hmm. right? And then I found out, like, probably about two years after I moved back that he was murdered, Right. So the crazy part <laughs> about his him, this my friend, his name was Mike. Um, him and my pop shared the same birthday, which was one like odd thing. So I was like, yo, that's nuts. Him and my pop, or him and his wife and my mom and dad had the same anniversary. Okay. Right? So, and then the crazy part is the day that he died was the day before my dad died, but like two years later. So like the fact that these dudes had the same like three dates Aligned up. You know, lined up like that. Like, so when I found out that my homie was, you know, taken away from us, like, that shit was crazy because I was like, you know, we were close, but I wasn't, like, super tight with him, like, you know. But, like, finding out about him passing got me all fucked up about my dad again because of the connections between yeah, the two. Yeah. So, like, it's crazy how shit, you know, like, you might be prepared to deal with one portion of it, but then that'll dredge up something else. Yeah. completely different and make you feel like a certain type of way about it and then you have to deal with both you know what I'm saying and like trying to find out like you were talking about having having that balance yeah. you also have to have a balance in the way that you deal with situations yeah. like this like loss and like you can't like a lot of people they're full go like they cry all day every day for like three days and then they're good for however long Man, so you know, sometimes forever like you never yeah. it never really pops back off like me I I never really dealt with my dad's passing like I should have, and now I'm still dealing with that shit pretty bad, like yeah. to this day, eight years yeah. later. So, you know, uh, just get out there and, 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 you know, rely on the people that you <clears throat> love to help you get through. Go find professionals if you need to do that too. I recommend it because sometimes having somebody who's not emotionally connected to your situation is more beneficial than talking to somebody who is because you don't have all that like past baggage. Yeah, there's no way. bias. Yeah, exactly. There's no bias. Exactly. So like having somebody who has no connection directly to whatever you're going through and talking to them helps a lot. So it eases the thing. Yeah. Like like they said earlier on with the preface. The preface was fucking spot on as per usual. This ain't the typical uh, episode that we got going on today. It's a little more somber and melancholy. Is my word of the fucking day. There you go. Melancholy. What's that? M E L O N C H O L Y. Thank you very much, Taylor, because I was waiting for you to grab the mic and say spell the shit. But yeah, on that. He, he did it. He did it. See what I'm saying? You pre, pre did it. See what I'm saying? That's <laughs> how, how the fuck we carrying it. All shit. right. We'll be back next week, man, with typical, the typical, the typical fuckery. Feel good show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of where we are. 
Sorry to fuck the vibe up and the mood up, but that's nah, just, man. Don't apologize for that shit because it's it's life, bro. Everybody deals with shit. This is just a part of it, man. And 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 having uh, a means to talk about it, we gonna talk about the shit that's going on in your life. So and that's what we doing. We talk. We talking about this shit, man. Hell yeah. If yo, if you got any loved ones, I said this earlier on, like in some of the earlier episodes when I was solo. If you got a loved one, you got somebody that you can reach out and touch. Go touch the motherfucker. Go kiss him. It don't matter. If, it, if you're beefing with somebody, you don't see eye to eye, you got some type of fucking misunderstanding, pick up the phone, call them, tell them what it is. You got a loved one, tell them you love them. Reach out, touch somebody, hug somebody, kiss somebody. Whatever, man, because ain't shit guaranteed besides fucking taxes yeah. and fucking dying and being black. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> definitely a guarantee that's for it. sure. That's it. But yeah, like, like Cliff was saying, man, like get out there, give people flowers while they're still alive, man. Like don't wait till they're gone. Yeah. And doing it at you know on their deathbed or at their funeral, give them their flowers while they still here, man. And and you know, just understand, yeah, everybody has beef. Like there's some certain shit that some people might be going through that you may not agree with or whatever. But like if you're close and you were close previously, like try and try and reestablish that relationship yep. because you know it ain't worth beefing because life is fleeting, man. Like this this temporary state that we live in right now, and. Um, <laughs> like borrowed time like a motherfucker. Exactly. So like, you know, enjoy life to the fullest, man, and and appreciate the people in your life why you got them around. Because like we said before, like you never know. You just never know, man. So, yeah. The only that's, thing you know is is that you're responsible for you and reaching out and touching the people that you need to reach out. Amen to that one. It. No doubt. Next week, man, I want to talk, yo, check out the little the scene from Batman, man. Some shit came out. I want to talk about that. Yeah, we're we'll going to get on that, that next week. Uh, I guess my tip of the day is going to be slow down, smell the flowers. You just might like it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, my tip of the day is uh, uh, there's definitely some resources and stuff online. If you need help, man, just do your research. Look online. Find a, find a somebody and go talk to them and, and get your mind right. Cause get your motherfucking mind get right. Get your motherfucking mind right. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, out, outro. I don't really got a lot, man. You know the mantra: consistency is key. Keys open the doors. Um, Cliff Sykes, aka the Uptown Supervillain, aka your cousin Cliff, talking shit. I'm tapping out. Yo, this your boy Chris Jones, aka Lord Kronos, aka Old Head Swag. <laughs> Hide your moms, aka Bass in your face. I am tapping out, and you have listened to Driving in the Right Lane, y'all. I always do this. Driving in the right lane at gmail.com. Hit us up on IG, Driving in the Right Lane. YouTube. Uh, YouTube too. D I T R L or look up Clifford Sykes on YouTube. Get the subs up. We got like 10 people that subscribe. All right, well, let's get more. Trivia. Let's get some more people on that. It's trivia. Yeah. You want to see this beautiful face, right? Where where you at on social media, man? Uh, You can find me uh, on Instagram at BaseJones478. I'm all over the Facebooks. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? The books of faces. The books of face. The chats of snaps. Uh, Yeah, man. I'm on, you know. Twitter somewhere. I don't even know. I don't fuck with Twitter like that, but you know, just find me. I'm on there. And this on positive too. Uh good looking to a listener named Tiffany hit me up down in Florida, her and her homegirl. Has some pretty good shit to talk about. Word. We'll run that back next week, man. All right, cool. Yo, Taylor, thank you. Yes. Get out this motherfucker. All right, bro. I'll see y'all next week. Peace. Peace.